Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to the fifth lesson in this series on developing a survival game. In this video, we'll set up our health system. This video and this series have been brought to you by Patreon sponsors like Random Number Generator. That said, open up your project and let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to the editor. And in today's video, we're going to be making our health system. Now, the first thing we're going to do is go into our survival game, our core, our character, and open up our character blueprint. And for some reason, I'm not sure why this is in character, this enum. It's supposed to be in our controller master. So I'm just going to move it there. Also, I'm going to make a slight update from our previous video on our settings in our inverse axis X and Y. I want these to have default values. So my inverse axis Y will default to negative 1, and my invert axis X will default to 1. That should resolve any issues that you might be having if you are having any issues with the system currently. With that done, what we're going to do now is we're going to create some variables. So I'm just going to do new variable, and this will be our character health. And this will be of type float. As I mentioned in the prep video, you could do integer. You could do something along those lines, but I just find it's easier to do floats in this case. But feel free to experiment. Feel free to practice. Try new things. All right, I'm going to compile as you saw, so I can set a default value. I'm going to set a default value of 100. I could set a default value of 1 and just do proportions. I just find that's harder to conceptualize, so I'm going to use 100. I'm going to create a new category called stats with the subcategory of health. There we go. Now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a two setters and one getter function. So my get setters will be to damage and to heal the character. Now, we've talked about polymorphism in the other prep videos and all the other recordings. And I've talked about, you know, hey, when we do things like this or this, we're violating polymorphism. And I'm doing so to give you a challenge to work on. In fact, actually, probably at the end of the series, one of the cleanup things we'll do is create our polymorphic versions of these. That said... I am violating polymorphism here intentionally with no intent to change it. And I will explain why after we create our first getter, or sorry, our first setter. So with that said, let's create that setter. I'm gonna create new function, and this will be called damage character. And what we're gonna do in damage character is we're gonna come in and we're going to set our character's health. And what we're going to do to set it is we're going to take the current health, which is the same variable, and we are going to subtract from it. So this has to be in the top pin, otherwise this does not work. And if you do decide to do a polymorphic version of this, again, this has to be in the top pin, otherwise this will not work. I'm going to take from the minus pin here and plug directly into our damage character. I'll create a new input or a new argument being passed in. I will select that node and just do damage value. So what this does is really quickly, if we go in here and I take this function out, is it has a value out here. This means that we can pass in any value we want into here. So we're not married to having one amount of damage. We don't have to have you know, a, a function that does 15 damage, a function that does 10 damage, a function that does one damage. We can pass in any value that we want to pass in. All right, I'm gonna take the return node and plug that into there. So what we're doing is we're getting the current health. So let's say we're doing 15 damage. Really quickly though, I'm gonna delete that because it's not been compiled yet and there was an error that said B, if you remember from the earlier video with the move forward and move right, or right vector and uh, forward vector, that was that same issue. So we get our current health. And right now it's 100. Let's say we're doing 15 damage. This comes in and goes, all right, take 15 from 100 and set the same variable, so the one that had the 100, to 85. So that's all that we're doing here. Now, if we think about this, you know, that seems pretty good, right? That seems like all we need. 
But we need to consider this as a game. What happens when we hit zero health? So what we're going to do is we're going to do a branch, and we are going to check, is our health under or equal to zero? So we're going to get our health again. You could pull off of here, but I just prefer getting a new health node and doing it this way, and do less than or equal to, and I'm not going to change that value. Our health min should always be zero. Hint for something related to healing the character that you might want to think about. And if this is true, all I'm going to do for debugging purposes is do a print string that says you've died, if that is not morbid enough. There we go. And also to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to pause the game. Set game is paused, or set game paused. There we go. And I'm going to set that to true. And then, as usual, I'll have my lovely little return node. I have a thing for return nodes. They're important, especially when you're using uh, console-based C++. All right, we will have something off the false, but that will come at the tail end of this section of the tutorial when we implement our UI. For now, all we're going to do is put a reroute here and put these here. And that's because regardless of if our character is dead or not, we're going to want certain things to happen. So yes, yeah, something will happen between these two reroutes. And then we'll come out the back end in this return. All right, with that done, let's just take this uh, function, I was going to say variable for half a second, and put it in a category called stats health. So again, we're doing that nice organization, mirroring our top and bottom, so mirroring our methods or functions, with our variables. Next, I'm going to create a function called heal character. So I'm going to be lazy about this and I'm just going to duplicate my damage character and this will be heal character. Now, these two functions, I'm violating polymorphism. I'm doing the same thing. I am changing the health value. The only difference is what happens at the end. I could have that in a separate node, a separate function. I can do this in a function and I could do whatever I'm going to do on the heal character in a different function, or even in the same function, I'm going to make two polymorphic functions. However, I am intentionally, as I said, violating polymorphism. Why am I doing this? Well, simply put, if we have to heal the character or damage the character and we have one function, then we have to think in a, well, relatively simple mathematical process, but that simple process runs counter to how we normally think and how we normally will work with stuff. So let me just change this node and it'll become a little bit more obvious. I'm gonna do float plus float. So let me just plug that into there. And on this one, it doesn't matter if this is on top or bottom then unless you are doing a polymorphic function. I'm also change this uh, input to heal value. So let's say this wasn't a, a two separate functions. This was one function. What was I getting on about when I said, oh, we have to think a certain way? Well, let's say we're using the heal function as our, as our base for our polymorphic approach. Sure. If we come back into our event graph real quick, and let me grab this node. This is health character instead of heal character. Let me just fix that before I go further in my little explanation here. If we want to damage the character, oh, sorry, we want to heal the character, we can put in a value. But let's say we want to damage the character. Again, imagine this is polymorphic. We have to put in a negative value. That doesn't seem too hard, right? But that means we have to calculate damage. So usually something to think about as you're going to do X amount of damage as a positive number. We have to calculate that as a negative number. And I, I've done that before for projects, and I'll say even I, knowing I've done that, have made mistakes. And the reverse is true. We could use the damage character. We could do a negative number here to heal the character. Subtracting a negative number from something becomes addition. So we could go about it that way, but again, that is just very tricky and can lead to mistakes. So we're not going to do that. We're going to have two functions. And I'm intentionally going to keep it as two functions. Now, the next thing we need to do is we're not checking are we under our max health, we're checking are we over our, sorry, under our min health, we're checking are we 
greater than our max health. And actually, I'm going to take from this health and do what I was about to do. So are we greater than our max? Well, what is our max? It's 100, right? Hopefully, my tone and my comment earlier about think about something here. Ooh. Think about something here when I said our health min is always zero, is giving away what's wrong with this. I mean, sure, if you never change your health value, that, that's perfectly fine. Think about what we can do instead. Now, instead of having our character die, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that, and we're just going to make sure the max is stuck at the max. Sure, we can have a doom thing where we go over, or was it doom? Doom and um, Wolfenstein do that. I can't remember what other games do that. But now we have a, a little bit of that same problem we had with our movement. If this changes, if our max is no longer 100, then we have to change this, we have to change this, we have to change any other place that we will reference our max health. And I can at least think of four other places by the end of this section that we will have a reference to our max health in. So I have four other places, four places total. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna pull off of here, just to make my life easier, promote to variable, and this will be character health max. Now, why did I pull off of there? Well, I put the value 100 in, so when I compile, it will automatically give me that default value of 100. That was me being slightly lazy at the cost of now just having to move this into my stats health category. I'm gonna plug that also into there. So now I only have to change one value if we need to change our character's max health. I'm gonna move this a little bit to the left because I know that I'm gonna have something else in here. There will be nothing off the false, but again, I do want to leave this going into our return node. And finally, what we're going to do is do our getter. And this is really simple. We're going to create a, fun a function, not two functions, that will be get character help. It is a pure function. And being lazy, I'm just going to grab my a node, do a getter, put a return node in, and literally just plug that into there. There's our character health. Boom, we're done. All right, so hey, we have a character health system. We can damage and heal the character. We can get the character health. But how do we test this? Well, what we can do is we can create some debug code. So I'm just gonna right click up here and type in left mouse button. And I'm gonna right click again and do right mouse button. And on our pressed for our right, I am going to heal the character. I am going to change that to a positive uh, 20. And I'm gonna grab my damage character and I'm going to set that to a positive, because remember, it's being subtracted from something, um, 25. I do want a little bit of a difference there so we can see that these are working the way that we intend for them to work. Next, all I'm going to do is I am going to do a print string for both of these. So I'm going to print. And what am I going to print? The character health. So I'm going to get the character health. I'm actually going to leave it right there. You can stay right there too. And I'm going to duplicate this print node here. Plug that in. And I'm going to kill the character once. So let me just start the game. Let me do it in the big window. Oh, well, I still had to click the into the window and I healed the character out of force of habit. 1, 75, 2, 50, 3, 25, and you've died zero health and I have no control left. So I'm going to close that out and now I'm going to bring the character down to, once that shift F1 thing goes away, to 50. 1, 2, and now I'm going to start healing. One, two, three, and notice it maxes my health out at 100. I'm not going above my max value. All right, I'm just gonna control S, save everything. And that brings us to the end of what we're doing. I'm just gonna comment this out as debugging, so I know to get rid of it at some point. We will be reusing this debugging stuff later on. But now we have a health system in place. So that takes us through what we need to do for this tutorial. For some reason, I didn't save, so I'm gonna just control S save again. And if you've enjoyed working on your health system, make sure to hit that like button down below. It lets me know I'm bringing you content that you appreciate and enjoy. It helps this channel and gets that information about the channel out there because YouTube runs on like, just like America runs on Duncan. All right, for any non-American audience member, I am sorry for that joke. For every American audience member, I kind of miss their bagels right now. Um, all of that said, I haven't done my full outro, and I'm saying all of that said. So 
If you want to be here when we start working on our stamina system, which we will tie directly to the sprint system. If you didn't notice, I just activated the sprint system, and now I'm slowing down because I've turned off my sprint. Active. Ah. Um, make sure to hit that subscribe and notify icon. So I want you to do something. Follow the mannequin's head. Follow the head. Where is it looking? Where is it looking? It's looking down to the right there at that notify bell. Click the notify bell to make sure you know when those tutorials get released. Otherwise, YouTube might decide not to tell you for quite some time. And if you want to help support this channel or you want access to this project, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Patreon supporters at upper tiers will get access to this project right away. At other tiers, they will get access once the project has completed on YouTube. This series has been brought to you by Patreon sponsors like Haynes, Quadmanson, and Rian. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.